kind. Okay, we're live. Research it. Uh, so when bang the gavel and we'll call the meeting to order. Let's get started. Um, this is the Transportation Committee of Community Road 7. And our first agenda item is an update on the M79 SPS. And we have Ed Pincar from the DOT to tell us all about it. Thanks. Sir. Well, good evening. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's wonderful to be back. Uh, my first time as Manhattan Borough Commissioner. Um, Congratulations. Really, thank you. I'm uh, looking forward to continuing to work together on all items, large and small. Um, I, can't, I don't have a favorite community board, but I think Margaret will take us most of all. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, my wonderful colleagues are here to present an update on M79, which of course we implemented last year. And uh, I think they're going to say that we've had some success, because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, uh, but I'll just turn it over to Julie and she can run us through. Great. So I'm Julie Shipper from DOT, uh, here with Joe Sharamonti from MTA. We're going to give you a little update once it gets. Um, Could you up. spell your last name for the moment? S-C-H-I-P-P-E-R. Right. They want to project. Uh, they want to project. Oh, okay. Screen, I believe. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, you, oh, you got it? Okay. I might, but I don't know her password. Guess yeah. doesn't work. Switch to um, any. And then, okay, you can take it. There's one, there's a D4 and an FSC. You could save it some committee members. Yeah, right. That's right. Better attendance. It's only a better attendance than some committee members. I wouldn't care. Let me just take a moment just to introduce. I have a, a new executive officer. Um, Alex, go ahead. I think, uh, I'm going to say. 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 But not a new captain. Um, she's one of the most experienced uh, executive officers in Manhattan North. Yeah. She's been actually running the traffic program in the 3.0, which goes from where to where? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, she was in the park for a while, too. So, so she's somewhat familiar with like uh, issues in the Upper West Side. Um, and I'm thrilled to have her. Great. What's her role? Yeah. <laughs> A R U D D I. You good? Right. Hey, you ready? Yeah. Um, where are we going to stand? But telephone. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Joe Sherman, I'm with New York City Transit and Bus Service Planning. I'll do the first half of this because it pertains more to bus stuff. And <laughs> Joe's will do the second half, which is more due to what I mean. Oh, uh, it's like Chiara Monti. C H I A R M O T. It's George or Joe? Joe. Joe. 
Okay, so we're going to bring you up to date on the M79 select bus service that started last year. Um, some of this we've talked about in the past, for instance, uh, just a little bit of the background. Um, we did a phase two study several years back in the M79. It was a difficult cross or slow, I should say, cross town trip came up as a need for select bus service. Um, it's heavily used with slow trips. It carries about 12,500 passengers per day now over its two mile route. Um, you know, it's a crucial connection to many of the subways, uh, the one, the six, and the B and C trains, as well as the 16 bus routes, including the M15 select bus. Um, as part of the select bus service, DOT often does some safety improvements along the route. Uh, prior to the start of SBS, uh, they recorded two pedestrians killed along the corridor, 34 people severely injured, and 458 total uh, crashes. That's from 2012 to 2016. And they have uh, also uh, several Vision Zero intersections um, along the corridor at Broadway, 3rd, 2nd, and 1st Avenue. Okay, so this is the route which you guys are sure are familiar with, with the select bus service stops. Um, so we launched it about a year and a half ago. Uh, and we talked about the features, and this is what we actually have in place now. We have off-board improved, we'll call it fair collection, at just about all the stops, not the very last one sometimes on the route. Uh, DOT put in three quarters of a mile of bus lanes along the corridor. Uh, they also put in 12 new of the bus time kiosks with the information displays, which you've probably seen. And they did, there's 10 intersections with signal improvement. So specifically on the Upper West Side, um, the treatments that DOT put in place for uh, not only bus service, but for traffic in general, they added the curbside bus lane on West 81st, but then they also had protected new turns off and on to Columbus in West 79th Street and then northbound um, on Amsterdam on to West 79th Street. So this is what you kind of want to know. <laughs> what are the results of, of the new service? So on average, uh, the bus is operating about 8% faster than the previous M79 bus service. Uh, and as a component of that, it's about 21% less time stopped at bus stops, and it's 5% less in actual traffic. I'll show you a little bit more specific breakdown of that in the next slide. In terms of ridership, um, one year after launch, it was up 9% ridership, so that's encouraging. And that's compared to only half a percent for all routes in Manhattan. And earlier this year, we have a whole market research department that does market research and asks the riders what they think of service, among other things. And with this particular route, um, we had about 96% of the riders say that they were pleased with service. Uh, that's compared with only 84 pre-SPS. So this is just looking at the bus travel time. Um, each direction by each time of day. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but you can see that the gray is uh, pre launch of the M79 in September 16, and then the blue is just this past September, so two years later. And then each, during each time period, um, travel time and end actually went down. So that's a good check. So I have two questions here. Sure. How does this compare with other SBS uh, speed improvements? Well, usually we see about 10%. So this is kind of and also the 9% increase in ridership. I'll, let me, yeah. Okay. Let him get through it and we'll take questions. Yeah, because the next, or maybe mm -hmm. not the next one. Okay, and then this is just specifically um, uh, time at bus stops. We'll call it dual time. How long it's just stopped at the bus stop. And that's actually 21% less than right, an off door fare collection. Mm -hmm. So you can see during the four time periods, um, we don't have the overnight hooks. That doesn't really play into this too much. Um, but you can see that if there's significant drops in the time spent at the stops at each one. So, okay, so here's talking about ridership here. Um, so, prior to the M79 launch in May of last year, ridership had been dropping. That's the blue line. And let me explain how this chart works. Um, what we did was we looked at whatever the month was, and then we compare 
previous year. So for instance, when the M79 started in May of 17, we looked at, we compared it to ridership in May of 16. So that we had, because if you just look at the month prior, sometimes there's seasonal fluctuations, especially when you get into the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea just to look at the actual month and then the year prior, and then you can see if there's any real growth. So um, this just looks at, I'll call it year over year, um, for several months before launch, and then up until this past August, which is the most recent data that we had for ridership. So as soon as we implemented the M79, ridership compared to the previous year's ridership started to increase. And it actually, uh, in the fall of last year, surpassed the growth in Manhattan bus service overall. Um, and it continued to grow. Um, and then one year after service, that's where we had the 9% increase compared to the year prior. So right now we're at about 12,500 12, riders on average a day. That's a little bit less than when it started, but uh, ridership is definitely rebounding. So I'm going to that. Uh, okay, Julie's going to take over because this is non bus stuff. Thanks, Joe. So similarly to the travel times of the bus, um, we've seen improvements in uh, non-bus vehicle travel times as well. So on average, um, the travel time has decreased about 8% from non-vehicle, non-bus vehicles. Um, and this is between Riverside Drive and Central Park West. Um, so you can see it broken down by um, direction in these two charts. So the eastbound um, has dropped a little bit more than the westbound has. Um, but still, overall, uh, we're seeing a nice decrease in time. So um, often after our, our operational projects launch, we start to look into our capital projects. Um, so think about ways we can really build out the treatments that we've put in and paint in um, concrete. Uh, so along um, 79th Street, we are looking to uh, continue to improve bus speeds and reliability. Um, and add uh, some pedestrian safety uh, designs uh, throughout the corridor. So we're looking at some adding some bus bulbs, uh, curb extensions, bus pads, and pedestrian islands. And I'll go further into each What's of those. Um, I'll, I'll go into it. Yep. Uh, so the timeline that we're looking at. Um, so in 2019, DDC, uh, the Department of Design and Construction, will begin their initial design here. Um, and go into their preliminary design between 2019 and 2020 um, and complete the final design in 2021 and we'd start construction in about 2022. Um, so bus bulbs you can see here um, are when we, it's basically like a large curb extension. Um, so this helps the bus, uh, if the bus doesn't have to weave into the stop, it can just pull right in. Um, also gives a little bit of extra room for pedestrians waiting. Um, so that's the bus bulb curb extensions. I'm sure you've seen um, around Manhattan when we extend the curb to give more space at the corner and then also shorten the crossing distance to help um, pedestrians cross. And then finally, pedestrian islands, um, you can see are the little islands that are in between the crosswalks that also help to shorten the crossing distance across the street. So on the west side, um, on this round, what we're looking at is three bus bulbs. So the bus bulbs would be um, at Amsterdam on, on 79th, uh, or 79th and Amsterdam, and then also on Amsterdam. So this would be a very large, there's a stop here and a stop here. Um, so helping both of those out. And the, the sidewalks on Amsterdam are very narrow, so this would help um, with that as well. And then also a bus bulb, um, on uh, 79th at Broadway, six curb extensions. So here at Central Park West, um, at Columbus on both of these uh, corners, uh, Columbus and 79th, and then two at Riverside Drive. So currently um, those are built out in paint and we'd be building them out in concrete. Um, and then four bus pads. So bus pads are the concrete, um, concrete along uh, a bus stop so um, the road doesn't uh, hum it um, when a bus is stopped there. And then one pedestrian island um, at Central Park West. And so this is already here, but we'd just be building it out uh, a bit more. So this just shows the locations of where we'd be um, 
doing some of these treatments. So uh, at 79th and Riverside, this shows the what's already there in pain and what we'd be building out. Um, the two corners at Amsterdam, as I mentioned, uh, 79th and Central Park West um, at this curb extension, and then 79th and Broadway would receive the bus bulb. And that's about it. We're happy to take any questions. Um, I have three, three things, first okay. of all. Um, have you seen a change in the bus speeds after you did away? This was after the initial M79, after you did away with the 81st Street and Amsterdam Avenue eastbound stop. You mean before select bus service started? No, no, it? it was a select, it was. The one on Amsterdam that was. Oh, you never put machines there, did you? No, you didn't. Um, all right, forget, 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 yeah, because that would have made a difference. And the, the sidewalk was too narrow for machines, so I know you didn't do right. that. Yeah. Um, do you, have you seen a change? Well, I guess I should ask you, have you seen it since you said there was uh, less traffic? Um, less traffic. Have you seen a diversion because of the bus lanes of vehicular traffic to another street? Um, not that I can say. Um, when we've looked at travel times, everything has de decreased. We haven't seen anything. Um, traffic increase on other streets. Okay. And the last question before we let open it up to everyone else is, are you aware of the upcoming work on the 79th Street Rotunda and what that will mean for the M79 bus? Yes, um, the, at the museum. Well, it, or, yeah, at 79th and Riverside. Yes, yeah, Riverside. Riverside. Yeah. Oh, okay. The other side, all the way west. All the way west. For uh, the really boat base it is, yeah. The bus turns around. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's I actually I did not know about that, but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a major change coming. Yeah. What, uh, in fact, they're going to lay over on Riverside Drive as opposed to on 79th Street, okay. where they are laying over now. And go, on on West West and go down right. West End and do a loop. Some of that operation stuff doesn't get to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes it does. <laughs> I'm not the one that's After making that decision. So, when is that starting? Uh, 20, uh, next year. Next year. Maybe next year. Okay. Next year. Okay. Next year. Next year. Like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, thank you for a new term, post pad. Um, and, and, <laughs> um, and the ones on 79th Street itself make a lot of sense to me. If I understand the construction, you in effect infill a portion of a, of a parking and or travel lane to create an easier access for the bus to get to the curb. The bus ball. I'm sorry, the bus and bolts. Yes. yes, thank you. Okay. My concern is with the Amsterdam one that you're proposing. Mm -hmm. Because there is um, enormous amounts of uh, congestion right there as a result of mostly upstream a block or two. So in between where the bus turns the first time and when it turns the second time, there's an awful lot. There aren't enough loading zones. Um, for the commercial enterprises along that stretch. And so even at 10, 11, 12 noon, um, there's rush hour like backup along that stretch. Sometimes it goes all the way to 86th Street. On so Amsterdam the notion of eliminating a travel lane on Amsterdam by putting a curve out in a permanent way that obviously could not be a rush hour protocol that you sometimes employ strikes me as exacerbating a bad situation. We knew this when we put in the, the, the bike lanes there. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the advocates for it. Um, I also advocated for you all to put in more um, loading zones than y'all did. But I think that what, we're, what we've got now is problematic. Adding, or, uh, adding to that congestion by eliminating a bit of a travel lane strikes me as a mistake. Okay. Um, this is something, I mean, it's good feedback to get, and we're working on a traffic analysis um, that will, you know, answer some of these questions as well and show us, you know, what's happening. And we recently that's... sent you a resolution asking for us to be part of a pilot for transit signal prioritization, and 81st and Amsterdam was one of those locations, which could speed the bus. Can I ask another question, yeah. um, which is, you have increase the speed of traversing the route, but you also eliminated one bus stop. Did that factor in your computations 
in terms of how it compares with other SBS implementation? Because you were a little below the the hoped for 10% number. Right. Well, um, that, and if you eliminate a, a stop. Right. Uh, that is factored into it because that's an end to end running time. Uh -huh. So it, it doesn't capture this. That's in between from end to end. So if there's a, a bus stop that was removed and it's speeding, Going past it, that's mm -hmm. And that bus stop was only one way that it was eliminated? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so it wouldn't. Eastbound, eastbound 80 right. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, eastbound didn't improve as much as westbound did. Just so I'm not sure I understand, that's the point. You know why that is? Because 81st Street is a bunch of narrower streets than 79th Street. That's why. But that wouldn't change in its relative its improvement. So it was narrow before and after. Right. The real so theory is that you lose ridership when you have it. So. Uh, well, I can't. There's much increased ridership at. Uh, yeah. Well, at 81st going eastbound and along this right. across the yes. street. So they shifted over there. Um, 79th in Amsterdam, you have two other buses. You have the M11 and right. 7 that stop mm -hmm. right at that same, pretty much the same location. Have you right. taken into consideration or making any accommodations? Because you know, I've seen it, them bottled up uh, or backed up. Is there any special consideration you've given to the fact that it's there's three buses that stop at that? All right, so stop. we could extend it and take one. You know, and there, that's what we're up against. So I just know what the procedure is because I, you know, occasionally you'll have two two sevens, two elevens, and the M seventy nine. Right there, I've right. seen an M eleven and seven stop. You're talking about a seventy ninth and Amsterdam. Right. Yeah. North going, uh, yeah. North north north. yeah. And, and so one of the reasons that we wanted to add this bus bolt there um, is because that sidewalk is so crowded um, with the cafes that are there, but also with all three of these bus stops. Um, so extending the sidewalk a bit will alleviate some of that congestion on the sidewalk. This the pedestrian track. Pedestrian, right, sorry, pedestrian but it. the bus. And that stop that that was just Doug, Doug just referred to is problematic in that it's amazing how many people don't know where to stop for the SBS versus the M7 and the M11. And there's running and asking people to hold the bus and that sort of thing. The signage could be improved there. To really delineate which is the M79 SBS stop and which is the M7 M11 bus stop. Okay, so if you're talking about So, great presentation, great news. Um, three easy questions. First one is Do you know why the non bus traffic uh, sped up? Second is It's even better that there's a decrease in travel times and an increase in ridership. Is that typical with SBS that you're getting that both the increase and decrease? Because normally an increase would cause a decrease in travel time, do you think? And the third not is all not all right. Right. No, but that's what I'm saying is you're you have benefits on both sides that usually contradict each other. And what is a hummock? Uh, I'm thinking hmm. is when the road. Um, so it actually dips from the bus? Dips because so, the buses are pretty heavy. They're heavy right. and um, when they're constantly stopped in mm -hmm. the same place. Well, there's a huge uh, one right at Broadway and 79th Street, right by the uh, right by at the, the stop there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, if, if you're not paying attention on a bike, you can have an interest. Yeah, stop. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so, so number one, yeah. Yeah. do you know why yeah. the um, so, non bus travel time? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. often, um, when we uh make some uh road treatments with design mm -hmm. treatments changes, um. You know we're we're looking at everything and not only to help the bus but but as the the road is traffic is uh put into you know uh, everyone's in one one lane they're they not weaving in and out around parked car around double parked cars um we've created more loading spaces where people can actually now pull into the mm -hmm. curb um so we often do see a decrease in that's great um, just, just to add one thing about the, the shift in ridership. Mm -hmm. One thing that's interesting, I should say, about M79 or any of the cross towns is that that's the only route. I mean, sometimes, like say on the M15, mm -hmm. you may have gotten some shifting from the local to the SBS, mm -hmm. or there's other routes where sometimes portions yeah. would overlap. So this is, you know, real snowflake. So that's it's not mm -hmm. getting pulled really from anything else. Presumably taxis. Um, 
maybe yeah. I, I, I that I don't know. Yeah. Um, I got a question about the enforcement. Yeah. Um, this is a general SBS question. Um, I often see three. I'll answer that one just so you know, because that, that's mm -hmm. that, I'll answer. Okay. I often see three or four guys waiting um, uh, at a stop for the FBS to pull in, and they're going to pull Yeah. And um, uh, so I'm not, and I actually got caught a little bit once. Um, they let me go because it was an honest mistake. But um, uh, a lot of people don't know. Like, um, I forgot. And uh, I'm just wondering, um, uh, you know, how many tickets do they write? Do you know, or are they actually justifying their existence? Um, well, I don't know how many tickets they're writing. That we used to track that a little bit, but uh, we get that as a board. You get it, okay. So I think they are good than I. But um, they use discretion. That's the one thing we always say. I mean, certainly in your case, they use discretion. Um, but the other thing I can say is we do do, not our group, but we have a whole data analysis group that does, just monitors fare evasion. And SBS routes fare evasion goes down. And I think it's just the fact that people know somebody could inspect their ticket or check to see that they actually paid their fare. On the non-SBS, it's massively up. How do you evade fare on the You're going in the back, back door. <laughs> So I take the SBS on 86 very often, and sometimes multiple times a day due to my, my work. And at the end of the day, I have a handful of paper tickets. So I'm just wondering if there's a long-term plan eventually to go green and to do... Yeah, they're going to a new fair payment system, I think, next year. Great. The first, That's the first phase kicks in next year with bank-issued cards for debit and credit, which will have an MTA chip in it. You can just tap it. But it's only for Grand Central to Atlantic Terminal. That's the first phase. In so the SBS is going to be a tap eventually. Eventually, yes. Yeah. Even, eventually, we'll see how it We still may have off our car question. That's to be. And we, we had something before the board last month about possible signal prioritization. Um, we asked for some, for some uh, possible pilot locations for that. We can look into it. I will say one um, on the cross town routes. Um, it's sometimes a bit difficult to um, put in TSP just because of uh, the signal timing that's already existing and the cross cross streets that um, have. So we often like to give a little bit more time to the avenues. Than the cross -town. But something yeah, like I, I actually like asked that. that question. If you had TSP for across uh, transit, transit signal priority, if you had that for like the first avenue SBS, and you had it for the 86th Street SBS, which would get priority, right. clearly the north northbound SBS, yes. M15. Right, would get and so that's often why we can't do it on yeah. the cross towns. But um, something. I just, I just have two questions on the other side drive. First of all, when when just when they close down the rotunda. Where are you going to put the buses? I, I this is the first time hearing about that, but I heard that uh, Riverside maybe. Is that's that's what I, heard. I, I don't know. The Never west heard. side of Riverside Drive, 79th to 78th Street, is where the Joint Transportation Parks Committee presentation we got from uh, from the Parks Department is where they plan to keep those buses. And so the buses are going to turn up 78th Street. No, well, don't don't know which street yet. That's a narrow residential street. I don't know. They may have to go to 72nd and do a whole loop. I don't know. Can't That's imagine a lot. Something we can look at. Yeah, we'll look, I mean, it's definitely we'll something we'll to get back to. Because right. you won't be able to go down into the rotunda and turn. No, they were going to go down to 72nd. Down to 72nd. That's what I figured. There are yeah. also different stages of the construction that are going to require a different mitigation depending on where we were working at. We have an update, Ken, on that in, in the December meeting, was it? Uh, of yeah, parks? December of the Parks and Environment Committee. Yeah, it's with us. Uh, the third Monday of December. The second part of that question is, as of right now, when you have a, an eastbound bus parking on the south, uh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, on the south side of 79th Street between the end of Riverside Drive, um, what happens is you, you end up in a situation where you have two lanes that are blocked, one block, lane is blocked off while that bus is waiting there, and traffic is backed up onto the Henry Hudson Parkway um, that can go halfway up to 96th Street, um, which is 
has always been incredibly dangerous. And the, the question was, why the bus stop can't, why the, the waiting area can't be on the corner of the, the corner of Riverside Drive between between Riverside and West End Avenue. Of course, there's a bus stop there right now. Right, there's, anyway. right and we do have stops where it's a layover first stop. Um, what? That's something we could look into. We, have, we, 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 we have, need have many complaints from folks on that block when the buses start up, the noise that's, that the bus startup sound makes. Well, the question becomes whether or not you're willing to put someone having a problem with starting up as opposed to people dying because you know, there's a bad crash on the New York Park Road. I know there hasn't been one yet, but we're waiting. We have actually asked that the layover have the buses face westbound that's a, yeah, that's and have them going that way and then when they're starting up just to come around and not lay over on the south side of Which 79th also Street. Fine. That's a safety issue. Correct. I mean, and that's just a no -brainer. You can solve that problem but just by doing what I just said. I agree. And we've only been speaking about that for, what, 10 years? Uh, of course. Um, but thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Great, Great news. Oh, by the way, just one more thing. If you do talk to the people that are working in the train division and tell them that it's not a good idea to make announcements while the trains are coming in, yes, because you can't really hear anything. Sure. I mean, you would see. Yeah, I mean, Dave, fly. those are coming from a central location. They don't know where you're hearing yeah. them, actually. So. Even when you're in, inside the train and the conductor decides to talk to you, they usually talk to you at the, at the loudest time. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Application for a newsstand northwest corner of 72nd and Columbus. Are you present? No. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is the newsstand applicant for 92nd and Columbus? You are here. Okay, we will we will we will take you first, and if the other folks do not show up, we will do a protected disapproval, which we normally do when the applicants do not show up. Uh, there is another problem with that particular 72nd Street that I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, which which we'll talk about if we get to it. Um, so let's let's take a look at your application. Uh, what's your name, please? Um, I'm uh, Roxana Abu Bashir Atkins' son. She couldn't come in because of health issues. Uh, because what? I'm sorry. Uh, because of health oh, issues. Oh, she's asthmatic. Oh, okay. Um, northwest corner of Columbus and 92nd. Here is a picture of the site. Um, it's between the two trees, correct? Yeah. Looking yeah, at perfect. this picture. And uh, proposed hours of operation would be? Um, we are new to it, so it's going to be regular hours as allowed by the. Um, and will you be handling Sunday newspapers? Um, if that comes under the hours then of operation, yes. So you, you plan to be open on Sundays? Um, at this point, we do not have a like a, a, like a solid plan of whichever days, but regular Monday through Friday is definite. Uh, Sunday is uh, still under discussion. Okay, and uh, all storage of, of, of materials and good. everything would be within the confines of the newsstand, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the proposal? Oh, uh, okay. um, what is the size of the, the newsstand? Just uh, regular uh, size that is allowed there i'm i i think it, i'm not fully sure about the size like uh, it's uh, the maximum allowed it's between the two streets well basically there's a big one and a small one right ten foot ten by is this in front of party city i guess so. mm -hmm. yeah and uh, here's a site plan if anybody needs it well, that's could, could you tell me your name for the minutes yeah my name is shahid S H K H I D. L S H A H I D A H I D I D. Okay. You want me to come closer? No, no, you're fine. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. Question: Are you going to have LED lighting on your newsstand? 
a lot of our constituents complain if it's facing residential areas that it comes in the night. Do you know if it's facing the street or it's going to be facing inward? I believe it's going to be And uh, yeah. it has anything to that uh, basically goes against the laws or uh, you know affect local community, we are not going to with the designs, if you could please put the brightness down to its lowest setting or see if you can have it facing the streams. We do have a lot of residents' complaints about that, if possible. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate it. Are you with Helen or um, Helen's, Helen's office? Um, do you have any, are you currently operating any other newsstands? No. No. Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions of the applicant? Wait a minute. What, what, do we know that the, 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 that's where we recently approved the infill of commercial on the old urban, uh, Upper West Side Urban Renewal um, zoning that didn't allow for a street side commercial, and so they infill it. That's the one with the Party City and the um, here's the site map. The new, the new Trader Joe's, right? Yeah, I think they're in front of you're in front of the pet store, not the. Uh, uh, the uh, closer to the Party City. Is the party city aware? Have you talked to them? Um, yeah. Oh, it's a block. Did you post any notices in the neighborhood? Uh, I believe the um, lawyer's office communicates to to the building which is gonna the, the new stand is gonna be facing, and any any property that's gonna be affected by it or close proximity to, to that. So and are you you don't know if that was done now? Uh, they regularly do that in the beginning okay. because that's the requirement of the application. Okay. Otherwise, the application doesn't go go further to towards you or. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, on where this? does Trader Joe's unload in that area? Because that's so probably in the middle yeah. of the street, like they go on the seven. Yeah, loading dock where is, this is. The loading dock is actually the corner. Is uh, it around the corner? The main no, entrance is. It, no. I think I think their loading is on Columbus. Okay, right in front of Trader Joe's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. But they also have, well, on Seventy Second Street, they also have a loading platform that they could pull in off the street. Yeah. But they use that for storage. Seventy Second. Yeah, this is the Ninety Second. Is are they going to do the same thing there? Because it's a disaster on Seventy Second Street. That's not. That's not. That's not the issues. Yeah, it's not relevant. Call the question. All those in favor? All right. That's five. Opposed? Abstentions. Five zero one zero. Non committee board members in favor? One. one. Opposed? One. one. And that's all the non committee board members. Um, this will be heard at the full community board in December. I don't know where that located is. Does it have on the uh, agenda yet where we are? Uh, you will be notified where the uh, full board meeting is. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. For it. Thank you. No, I, I, no, I looked. Well, it doesn't, um, okay. no. Captain Mellon, do you have anything? Do you want to report on it? And just to let you know, we live stream and then archive the meetings. Yep, thank you. So, just want you to be aware. Oh, so you want to show all those relatives at Thanksgiving? You can call us up. Which means to try to be more discreet than he usually is. Yeah. <laughs> I just I didn't know if I should stand up or stay sitting. Can you just relax and just give it to me like the first time they got date? All right. So I'll give you guys um the for the 28 day period uh, total collisions this year we've had a total of 140. Um, if you break that down, from those 140, uh, four of them were bicycle and uh, seven pedestrians were injured. Regarding enforcement, we've had uh, for hazardous summonses, total hazardous is 800, I need my glasses, 806. 806 what? Total hazardous moving violations, summonses issued. Do you need a recap of like uh, what the, we have regular summonses and we have a certain subset that we consider hazardous that are most violations that most directly contribute to uh vision. to collisions the vision, yes vision zero Correct. summonses yes. so that's uh, like this obey sign the seat belt driving and talking on cell phones uh failed to yield uh to the right of the pedestrian 
some of us like that. Um, I'll give you a further breakdown. Like improper turn is 144, red lights 102, disobey sign 205. Have a failure to yield. Uh, failure to yield 44 for the 28 day period. And speeding? 84. 84. Yes, sir. And do you break it down by commercial vehicles versus passenger vehicles? We can. We're not equipped with that right now. We can give you a global, like an overall number, not per violation. I think we have on the sheet, we do have. Um, but we have broken down as uh, livery and motorcycles and stuff like that. So for taxis. Right. No, um, I'm concerned with commercial vehicles versus. Uh, not, you know, regular yeah, yeah. I didn't. We didn't. We didn't bring it tonight. But yes, we do. And the other thing we've been tracking this month is there. As I think, as everyone knows, there's been a citywide push for um, um, garbage trucks, yeah. private carting, particularly. Right. Not when I'm talking about New York City Department of Sanitation. Right. right. Uh, private carting, um, and we did a uh, a, a week long um, operation targeting them. Yeah, that was so made a lot of money on that one. We're going to get those people. Yeah. Does that include um, a, a construction degree carding as well? Yes. As yeah. Hundred percent. Yep. 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 So that initiative message? was from the 29th, October 29th to November. Citywide, 10th. yes. And we got a lot of press citywide, and the companies, yeah. you know, uh, are starting to closely screen their employees, look yeah. at, uh, look, you know, well, train them a little bit better to people. stay off certain streets, etc. So yeah. Oh, turning it down. Nice and cool. So. Yeah, this, my question that we have is we have a lot of construction going on in our neighborhood. And a lot of times they have these container trucks for the um, debris that's coming out. From the altar. They look like a garbage truck, but they're not. Well, they're not. They're, they're flatbed. You know, they're not flatbed, but they're box. They're, they're okay. container yeah. trucks. And, and the question is, um, they usually pick up container trucks between 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning. And these are not quiet. Um, pickups. There's nothing I can do about that. But is, is there a rule that says no? There's no rule. No, not that. Not that. Not that we'd enforce. If there is such a regulation, we have no idea. It's not something we would do. And as far as I know, most of the trash collection and pickup is specifically designed to be overnight to keep these trucks off during peak hours of illegal right. traffic. Right. Uh, Captain, we, as you are well aware, we have the Thanksgiving. Day parade mm -hmm. uh, coming up, and I. Oh, they didn't cancel it this year. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, do you know what day it's on? <laughs> it's uh, it's always a massive uh, jam. How how early in the process is the public notified? What streets are closed? What are open? Um, that sort of thing. You know what? I should actually probably get it out. We'll get it out on our Twitter feed this week. I mean, we're going to start the no parking detail Tuesday night. Um, you know, Wednesday starting at uh, probably 10 a.m., CPW is going to be closed uh, because they're going to be setting up all the metal. Uh, the entry point, you know, between you're talking between 81st Street all the way down to uh, 7-4 this year on CPW. And that's going to be closed probably about 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And then that's, that just doesn't, it doesn't reopen. And how far north? Of these locations, would motorists be advised they have to get off that route and go south on Columbus or Broadway or whatever? Let me find out. Let me find out. And what I'll do is um, we have our all agency planning meeting on Thursday at 1 p.m. Excuse me, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Um, tomorrow at 1 p.m. What I will do is I'll advise everyone is check my Twitter feed um, tomorrow night and Thursday, and we'll get it to you a week in advance. That should be no problem. Thank you so much. You got it. That's easy. Do you tell all the cars that are parked after Tuesday? On Tuesday, we're talking next week. Yeah. Uh, they be reloc. They're not towed to a pound. They're just relocated yeah. to, which is an issue, which is hard, but we yeah. do it. One hey. of the things that we that I notice on, on in our neighborhood is um, bus stops are, are used as parking. Uh, fire hydrants are used as parking. Uh, Pumps or you know that's that's a no-brainer. They park there, and there's never any ticketing that goes on. A lot so, of ticketing that goes on. Well, and not in our neighborhood. Again, I don't. I mean, you have a big section, 
but I'm just saying that Thank this you. Maybe is just you should define what our neighborhood means since we're I'm all sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking between uh, 72nd Street and 75th Street. Between? So uh, between West End Avenue and Riverside. There you go. Now you so can find your the neighborhood. The NYPD, the, the uniformed police officers, don't do it as much anymore. We're down tremendously between anywhere from like when you're talking double, which I mean, excuse me, bus stops uh, and um, Pumps, fire we're probably items. down in the 2 0, we're probably down about 80 percent. Uh, in the combined 80, let me see this year for my cops are down 83.75 percent in bus stops. Um, I don't actually have fire hydrants on me. Um, crosswalks were down 58 percent, but that's by design. The department doesn't want the uniformed police officers writing those summonses, they have deployed additional traffic agents. And they're writing more than ever, especially because now they just they can use the handheld devices and issue a ticket just by scanning a license plate. Um, so overall, as an agency, we're up. They have more traffic agents out there, whatever. And if you want, I will bring data. You know, you know you my email address. You can always just shoot me an email, and I will happily give you uh, how much we're doing. But um, I really, I don't care how much you're doing in other neighborhoods. I do care how much you're doing got in other neighborhoods. Um, that's something I can pass on to the uh, Chief Transportation's office, who manages our civilian that's traffic. Agents. Thing. No, it's but you can't you can't deal with the whole, with this whole section. You know, it just on the whole section. But I'm just you know, this is the only one I can realize and I can see. Um, just getting back to the crash statistics, what was the time period? For oh, the 28 day period. Um, yeah. I think those are the numbers that I gave you, right? Yeah. 28th period. Was uh, October 15th to, thank you, to November 11th. To 11-11. And how many um, bike tickets have you written? 35. Uh, for the 28th period, 27. First, is, was it overall in... Uh, I'll give you the overall total movers. 27, the total precinct movers, everything is uh, 837. So 27 out of 837 went to bicycles. And that was hopefully for flagrant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, that's a, that's a, as you can see, that's a small fraction of our, uh, of our summonses. The bicycles are a small fraction of our collisions. Right. The, the heading of quality of life is changing the time slowly. We talked before about unnecessary hunting, people just sitting on their horns. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of this going on, and you you explain why you it's hard to take it them. I understand that completely. Yep. But I, I still good. think if, if, a, if a policeman banged on the window and said, cut it out or else, I think that would go a they long way. One, one day. Right. Oh, I, I'm a big believer, believe it or not, I like using the PA in the car. No, oh, why, that would really, why are you yeah, honking? Stop speaker. honking. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'll make that a training issue. You know, I'll make that like, a, I, I, I have no problem. Like, I'll, I'll make that a training issue to command and say, listen, it's tough summons to win. There's nothing wrong with going over the PA and saying, stop honking, comment. I think it would be a great, I think people, I, a little public shaming. Yeah. Yes. Would, would go along with that. I think it would be a real help. That's an easy one. We can make that. I like that. I'm still trying to picture the names of sign. I'm still trying to picture people sitting on their horns. <laughs> uh, question. That, I drove down yesterday, picked someone up on 79th Street, drove down Columbus, uh, and then up Amsterdam. Especially Columbus, the double parked trucks were really bad to Awful. the extent that Awful. there often was just one lane going through. Awful. Do you, and especially well, when you go down Columbus, especially between 7972, it's tough. The two four has it the worst right around the Whole Foods up, uh, yeah. you know, like, like, but yeah. between us, you know, actually anywhere between seven on Columbus between seven nine and six six. Sometimes it's down to one lane, yeah. and yes. we will write the occasional when just to get traffic moving. We tell people to move, and they don't move. We will write. I'm I'm a proponent. I like your idea of actually having dedicated drop off zones at the expense mm -hmm. of some parking, yeah. some you know vehicle parking there. And you go down Columbus. There's actually a health a hefty amount of metered parking, yeah. um, and I, I, I you know we've talked about that. But what's the calculation when you tell the trucks when you just write a ticket and when you tell them 
we must move right now. If it's if the street is clogged, we give them a chance. You know, the cops will hit the siren real quick to move people. If nobody comes out, if nobody moves, you know, in an expeditious fashion, which means a few seconds. I'm moving now. Then they get out of the car and uh, write the summons. Yeah. The idea. Is can, go ahead. If they show up, can you tell them you must move right now? You can't finish unloading. No, if they're the. It depends. You know, like it's the airport, it's, like it's move right now. You know, if it's if it's if it's choked to one lane of traffic, mm -hmm. yes, pull forward. Yeah. Pull forward and pull to the right. A lot of times it's laziness too, mm -hmm. on the part of the uh, truck driver. Yeah. A lot of times you see they, they don't want to forward curb 15, spot. 20 feet. They'll be an open spot. But they'll still double park. Yep. Yeah. Because they don't want to block. Yeah. yeah. I've also seen them. They'll double park because there was a parked car. Then the parked car goes and, and they, they don't move. They just stay right. there. Yeah. Right. Oh, they don't move. This is outside of your district, but there's a West Side Market at 98th Street and Broadway mm -hmm. that has a loading zone in front of it. And what they routinely do is still block the travel lane and then use the loading right. zone yep. as a staging area for exactly. the stuff that they've taken off the yep. truck. And they do the same thing at Trader Joe's on 72nd yeah. Street. Yeah. 72nd Street, the, the big trucks park and take up a whole lane so they have a whole other yep. lane where they park cars are. They don't go. Um, I, I think it's also, it's almost a, a, a nasty. I want to flip back to Rich Rude real quick and I'll let you finish in a second. Is it, how much I have four cars on patrol at any given time. Mm -hmm. How much can my four cars actually make a dent on that in between when they do write these summonses yeah. and they're running around answering all the 911 calls? We largely leave this, the policy decision was made, largely leave this to the civilian traffic workforce that mm -hmm. is on foot. So, do we do some of it? Yes, we still write. We're yeah. down like 80%. I'll give you double parkers. You have the uh, top sheet really quick. Um, uh, I'm just double thinking parkers. of it. You know, we still have written 180 of them year to date. Yeah. In the precinct. It's just that's, the cost of doing that's down 80 percent. So that's, we still write that's them. What, that's what people. Yeah. It. It's not the getting them to stop yeah. parking. It's just part of the cost of doing business. And they yeah. can also negotiate their tickets with the city. Depending on what, it, if you're UPS and FedEx and certain. Well, that's a yeah. but it seems the difference. The difference would be if there was some kind of legislation that said once you racked up so many of these, your registration I, is at risk. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth offering you some kind of like solution. Like, it, 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 my four, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can't. The idea that the idea that you know, like the four to five cars I have in patrol can solve the double parking problem, you know, on the on the major quarters, Broadway, Amsterdam, Columbus. Yeah, I mean, we got to be realistic. Yeah. You, they can't, mm -hmm. but supplement that with all the civilians, and you know, can they make a dent? Yeah, probably. But yeah. again, I think a lot of it's cost of doing business. Better engineering, I believe, is what you. are Far enough, yeah. and, and I, I agree agreements. with you. How well, that's what he means by engineering. Don't worry, 115. It's a really dumb question. When you say the issue is just having four cars, I assume it's both the person power and the cars, that you don't have extra officers who could just walk by foot. And no, we turn up, on any given tour, we'll turn up four to six police cars. People think we're a lot yeah. bigger than we are. Right. Yeah, we have four to six cars, and we have specialty summons cars we'll deploy during a day, uh, you know, two in the day tour, two in the four. But ultimately, the limit's not. But they are moving violations, not parking. You can't have people on foot. You don't have extra people no. that just don't have cars. It's just all this, the data that you just provided from the previous 28 days, that's strictly 2 0 precinct, right? Correct. Yeah. So yeah. where where is the 2 4 precinct coming there? next month, actually. Got it. Because obviously, our. Penny has invited them and they've been able, they were right. able to come tonight. But Cool. I, I just have a question. One of the things. We, we know when traffic is bad, when traffic is going to be backed up. We know that people yeah. want their homes at certain times more frequently. What happens if you took one of your auxiliary police persons and just have them standing on the corner? Once someone sees someone that looks like a, like a cop, they tend to react differently than if there's no one there so at all. That's a good question. The, the, the um, rules with auxiliaries. We use them when it comes to Vision Zero. We use them for uh, crossing operations in the uh, in during the dusk hours when there's more frequent uh, collisions and pedestrians are less visible. And if you follow our Twitter feed, you'll see the auxiliaries are out there all the time, helping people cross the street. You know, we're talking like Seven Nine in Amsterdam is a big one right around the corner from us. Um, Seven Nine in Columbus, uh, Broadway, etc. Um, the problem is this: is that we can't just deploy auxiliaries by themselves to just stand in intersection. The rules state, the department rules state that they must be with a police officer. So I have an auxiliary coordinator, one, DJ Jemerson. He's great. He's phenomenal. 
but he has to be out there with them or there has to be a cop with them. So it's kind of like same, same. They don't supplement my resources as much as you might think. Good question. Um, anything else for the captain and his new executive? You're welcome. You're welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we need to do a protected disapproval of the newsstand applicant for the northwest corner of 72nd and Columbus. There's a whole host of things wrong with that application, but at the moment, because he has or she has not shown up, we need to do uh, protect protective. So, Call the question. Uh, question is called. All those in favor? Six committee members and two non-committee members, and that's everybody. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say something quickly about the news of the day, um, some of which you'll see tomorrow, because uh, many of the transit advocates will have comments about Amazon coming to Long Island City. While it's fabulous that Amazon is coming and that all these jobs are coming, what is not fabulous is that neither the city nor the state uh, negotiated um, infrastructure improvements sure. for the thousands of additional riders that will be on the subways, tens of, tens of thousands. Um, some of that you'll see in, in the press tomorrow, but uh, You're right. there, there is a problem with, with Long Island City. If anyone has seen Long Island City lately knows that it's a, a booming like you've never, you've never seen so many high rises. It's continuing building. That's wonderful. If the infrastructure can handle it um, with the April 2019 closing of the L train tunnel, there will be additional riders by the thousands at Court Square Station transferring between lines. Um, we don't know exactly when. Uh, as it turns out, City Corp has been phasing out employees at the Long Island City City Corp Tower and moving them to Secaucus uh, for some reason. So Amazon is going to be filling up the City Corp Tower, but they're also going to be on the Riverside and there are no transit facilities there. Assumedly, a giant corporation like Amazon will have shuttle buses to take them to the various subway stops. But again, if you've been to Court Square uh, and there's just one problem, either on the 7 or the E or the M, you are, you are, you are packed. And now we have these tens of thousands of additional riders. So hopefully they'll do the right thing, but uh, nobody's forcing them to do it. Um, and there's also, no current plan to do that. There's no current plan. Sure there is. They're going to commute by drone. <laughs> well, I noticed the mayor has said we'll, we'll provide a water taxi to go to our other ferries because he just won't contribute to the MTA. He just won't. So, you know, we have we have a problem coming. I mean, the jobs and everything, uh, if you, you know. But this problem is endemic. I mean, you, you see in New York City where land is so incredibly valuable, whereby you sh we should be able to say to a person building a building that you can't take up a street, that you have to do this, that, or the other thing. And, and if they say no, then someone else will be there to grab that piece of land anyway. Um, and, and we just don't use we just don't use those kinds of um, implements to, to get what we need for the city. I know a lot That's, of other cities were competing for Amazon. And well, I don't, yeah, but I'm, we're just talking about in general. You, you go down where there's a construction going on, you'll see um, trucks that take up two lanes, you'll see people you know, standing around, closing lanes, stopping traffic, and, and, and there's no reason for that. It's just, it's just wrong. Um, but for better or for worse, the CB7 Transportation Committee doesn't control that. Having said that, the transportation in Long Island City is a whole lot better than the transportation in Crystal City, the other location yeah. they chose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Crystal City is in Virginia, outside DC. It's on the, it's on the DC metro line. Right. Across the Potomac. Yes, across the Potomac. Yeah. Are we doing new business then? I'm sorry? New business, business sure. issue? Okay, so I have a couple of items. Uh, one item is uh, Manhattan Day School. Uh, Manhattan Day School, um, during the winter months, closes the school at 2 o'clock. However, on Friday. They, on Friday. However, they keep no parking until 5 o'clock. There's no reason for that. Secondly, they have, they have no parking from... They, I think we brought this up to, to the Department of Transportation when they were here, and they told us they can't change the signs for one day of the week. Well, that's not true because if you go if you go to other sections of the city, the signs do change. Secondly, 
we had an agreement with the people at Manhattan Day School that they would put a sign saying, we are closed, the school's closed, which would have allowed them people to, to park because yes. there would have been a note wow. saying school's closed. But then they where would they put these signs on the tree that where they're where they're hanging the signs up anyway i think i think a motorist that's not familiar with the neighborhood would probably go by dot signs and not a handwritten well that's sign. okay because i don't care about you know people coming <laughs> from out of town i don't care about the people that live in the neighborhood <laughs> would benefit from that second secondly we, we have this situation with uh trader joe's on 72nd street you all talk about how you're concerned about pedestrian safety and, and, and all these things. Well, when you park that 40 foot trailer in the second lane so that a bus has to go around them. And then also when the M5 is going, the M5 is going to be making a right hand turn at that corner. So if there are pedestrians, which there are never no pedestrians going, that means that the 70s, the, the number five bus can't make the turn. Therefore, traffic is all the way backed up, and then people start honking their horns. How did how did anybody you, in their right have mind? Have you witnessed why the Trader Joe's truck would be in the second lane and not the curb lane? Yeah, is, I do. Was there private cars parked there? No. Was there somebody else parked? No, there? they just it's easier for them to unload that way. And they don't care about the safety. Either. And they don't. They correct. Don't no, they certainly correct. Care about I'm, I'm only concerned about I'm, I'm concerned I, I, about I how right how this committee allowed that to happen. Because it, it had to come in front of the committee. Wait, 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 no, you think we have that kind of power to stop Trader Joe's from parking? No, no, in the no. But, lane? But, but we never, we never even. Captain said, Malin is issuing never, tickets, and it doesn't affect them. Again, how, how could that have occurred? How could our politicians have allowed that to occur, con considering that they too are constantly promoting, you know, pedestrian safety and this and that and the other thing? It just makes no sense whatsoever. The other problem we have in our neighborhood is the Astor Hotel. The Astor Hotel now has been taking up a, a block of parking spaces to park there. Can you give the address of the Astor for the minutes? Uh, what is it? 70, one, one, inch, one, one half of the block is on 75th so Street between Broadway and West End. The other is um, so 76, 75, 201, 74. 76, I think. Yeah. 76. So, 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 um, the, the, chair, the chairperson of the board brought that up and said that we should give them these spaces, but she she said that would be just during construction. They're parking all their contractors' vehicles on the 75th Street side, and I mean, there's no reason for this as well. Someone, and where are they in their construction? They've been, they've been finished for half a year already. This is just for people doing, you know. But they just have that whole half a block open, and there's no reason for that. But but we allow them now. The Belnor just took another. These are section. DOT installed signs. Yes. Well, then we'll talk. No, they're not DOT. They're they're, they're, they're the, the Belliards that that they put. Bellards. Yeah. Another Boston Barry. Of oh Boston. Okay. But they know. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, what's her name? I I walked her. I showed her because she walked Roberta. I walk. She walks in front of that every single day. And she's unwilling to say anything or do anything. Um, you know, this is this is just. We'll talk to her. About it. Okay. I think your concern is 76th Street, not 75th. Right? Both. They're on both streets. They're on 75th and 75th. And 76th. That's, that's not the hood. Mm -hmm. That's a different piece of property. No, no, no. The, the so Astor, you're talking about the Astor is the front, and, and on the next block as they well. They changed their hotel entrance. No, no that's the Bell Nord. That's the Belmont. No, 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 That's different from the Astor. The Astor is one block further south. Right. Okay. okay. Right. The Belmont now they have a, another Bell, entrance. Bell Claire, they, yeah. Right. Um, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Right. But again, um, we'll talk to Roberta. We'll talk to Roberta. To, uh, okay. I will actually. I'll see her tomorrow. And, so. and then, and then, although history has told us that the DOT keeps its own counsel on when to grant those uh, closures and when to remove them. Yeah. And we've tried in other locations to ask them to expedite the removal. We have. And their answer is that, thanks very much, but we don't need your input. Well, that's right, because someone's getting, so, there's some reason why they're doing that. No, it's that. because it's only four parking spaces on each side. And well, they, well, but then again, they will want, pursue it. Well, we'll, okay. Okay. we'll pursue it. It's, it's uh, only been three years. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.